For the last 11 years, I've been involved with a program called the Summer Science Program. This is probably the most successful program for gifted children from around the world. It started in 1959 and it continues to the present day. About 85% of the alumni go to the very top schools in the world, including Harvard, Caltech, MIT, etc. In the next few slides I will describe the program. What made it successful was its ethos. Baker University has an ethos that it doesn't follow, but if it would follow and if it would be as organized as the summer science program, it could thrive and fly high. It started in Southern California in a place called Ojai. Now it moved about 40 miles down the road to a place called Westmont College and it has a second campus in Socorro, New Mexico. I taught in Ojai and I taught in New Mexico and in both places I was the academic director. These are not the most beautiful beaches, resorts or best hotels or anything of that sort. The main idea is to observe with amateur style telescopes and to do a program that is very professional, as professional as it could be with those telescopes. Therefore, those random uh, telescope domes that you're seeing here are the tools of the trade and to this day we're using something of that nature. Here are the students and staff from about seven years ago and basically this is about the same number of people that are there every summer and multiply that by two for the two campuses multiply that by now 54 years and you have quite a few alumni and that alumni connection is a very big part of how the strategy is held together first and foremost there is an academic mission though basically the main thrust of these five and a half weeks in the summertime are to take three measurements of asteroids in these days near Earth asteroid in the past asteroids between Mars and Jupiter and find out the exact orbit which will tell you not only how and where those asteroids are but the chance of them slamming into Earth. Guess what? Those 17 year olds saving the world is quite a big deal. As I said, this does not require a tremendous amount of investment. This is one of those three measurements. All you see there is circles around eight stars plus a circle in the middle around a suspected asteroid. That's all we need and the three of these are the tools that we're gonna use in order to find the asteroid orbit. What we do is we use those observations to find the orbit and in this case this is an outer orbit to Earth's inner orbit and by the fact that we're taking over Mars or an asteroid for example we can find the exact orbit that way. More in the next slide. Here we add a little bit of the math required. As you can see it has to do with something called vectors which of course are the bread and butter of physicists like myself. and well, let's see what the students think about it. Well, they're students, so some are into it and some are a little bit less into it. The math, as you can see here, can be a tad intense, but these are smart kids and in five and a half weeks they get it. And the second picture on this slide is a second method using the same thing to find the orbits of asteroids. The next few slides show those orbital elements. This slide shows Evan and Angel. Evan graduated from Stanford, Angel from uh, Caltech. 
and now they work full-time jobs. So when you hit those students with lots of learning, how do you keep them interested? How do you keep them going? What is it that really makes sense? First and foremost, the grounds should be interesting, the place should be fascinating, and with Baker, can hold our own. Second, we have to have other people that matter. Faculty, especially alumni, and especially teaching assistants. At Baker University, we're doing a very poor job. Third, we should have a way flatter organization. In the picture is the CEO of the program, who is actually a head of a major computing support for oil companies in Texas. That's now the CEO of this program, and he gave a lecture because I asked him to. He also bought us pop and cleaned their kitchen, the kitchen when it was needed. Everything for the program. That's a picture of me from five years ago. I'm not, I now have even less hair. It's not enough that we have something like nice grounds. We have to have activities and their baker is getting way better with our wonderful dean of students. In this picture, those students are working with a device that was used by Edwin Hubble, the guy that found that the universe is expanding and whose name is on a very famous space telescope. Traditions matter a whole lot. We have them at Baker, the students barely know about them. A lively student scene based around academics where social and academics mix. We are not doing that great at Baker University in that regard. Of course, a social scene is something that we do have at Baker and that, of course, will go on. A critical aspect is that in order to keep on being relevant, we have to change with the times. And there is something else that Baker University has been very, very, very poor at since the late 1980s. Same thing with equipment. It doesn't have to be incredibly expensive. It can be just right. In this particular case, we're talking about the program that has been using no more than about $10,000 every summer and keeping one of the most tight ships in the business. There has to be a sense that whatever it is you're doing in your preparation for professional job is relevant in other areas. In this picture, students are um, observing things that are completely unrelated to those asteroids by themselves. These are such pictures that students took on their own. There also has to be a sense that students are connected with the outside world and with relevant things that are happening. In this particular case, students were observing NASA slamming into an asteroid. In the next picture, students were observing a launch that just happened to come across campus, a very rare event. And there are many other things that you can find out where you show the relevance to students in real time. Again, Baker University is not that great in those areas. And it's also not very great at touring the future. Basically, at touring the connections to where it is that we have our skills invested. For example, in this picture, we took students to several places, an observatory, a planetarium, JPL Center near Caltech, etc. Baker University rarely takes students to places like Cerner, Garmin, uh, Sprint, etc., which are the target areas for where we should send students. Another area where SSP is amazing and Baker sucks is bringing people from out of town to give 
lectures or to give interesting input. We have many alumni that are in amazing positions and the most we do is bring them to give some sort of a uh, lecture at a uh, graduation. It must be amended. Here I'm showing some of the best lectures. You may recognize some of them. Humor is a great relief. Okay, in it, it, that program, we prank the students; they prank us back. In this picture, we've overdone it. The math is nothing that those students could handle. I kind of snowed them on purpose for five minutes, and then sent them to play. In the next picture, you'll see the response, which was to take my um, my furniture from inside my apartment, put it on the school bus. This is part of a mentality that is very much kids mentality and we still have it at Baker uh, however we are treating it more as a an issue of discipline and rarely as something that is kind of on the border borderline which we should respect and limit Notice that what makes SSP survive, above all, is that teenagers love working at night. But it's true for 18 to 23 year olds as well. And we have to have one ethos for those people and a separate ethos for SPGS and pre nursing. In conclusion, every single campus should have one relevant core that draws everyone to it. This is not the 1950s. It can't be reading, writing, speaking, and maybe a uh, German language. Okay? Acquiring, processing, and outputting information is relevant to each and every program on campus. We may have to vary it a little bit on the other campuses. But with that approach, we have a chance.